In this video, I'm going to go over how to construct a whole bunch of uh, intersecting angles, intersection points, distances using this form model right here. So, I've already done all of the uh, earlier steps, setting it up from the start point to get me right here. It's already set in program mode. Now I'm going to work on locating this part. So first I'm going to do the Z origin using a plane, keep it with the CMM touches, and I'm going to select these features here. This plane and that plane are the same one, I'll do the multiple geometry, okay. And then for this, to make sure that I'm not going to be trying to go through either of these prongs here, I'll actually have it go in a specific order. I'll start here. And go over to here. I turned off the orientation and the touch so it'll be a CMM movement. And I'll just name this one Seating Surface underscore because it does not recognize spaces in the program commands. Apply. And then use that for my Z0. One axis under datums. I'll call that by the same name, it's facing Z plus, and it's going to be my Z origin. Okay, now my origins drop down to be plus with that surface. I'm going to do an absolute movement to get me back to the center of the part, X and Y zero, using the part coordinate system to keep it consistent. My Z, I'm going to go up to, we'll say 20 millimeters. You leave that at zero, zero, leave that at 180. Now I'm back in the center of the part. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do a cylinder from the ID of this model. And I'm still gonna do just CMM movements for locating it. I'm only gonna take a couple of points just to locate the part, like I said. So I'll go here, here, and then on the opposite side, I'll take two points from there also. I'll just go in here, make sure they're all at the same Z height. Copy the first one. This way I know that my circle is all gonna be on the same plane. And I'm just copying and pasting all of those. And this is going to be my ID. And now I'll do another set to make my cylinder. So I have points on one level and then points on another. And again, copy the Z height. And do that for these ones. So now, this is just gonna do a really quick cylinder. Fly. And I'll make that my next datum point. Going to datums, two axes. This one I'll label ID. And that's gonna be this right here. 
It's also facing in the Z plus axis. It's gonna be my X and Y origin. I'm gonna use my seating surface. For this one, axis is gonna be none, so they don't conflict. And then that's still gonna be my Z origin. Tertiary is gonna remain disabled. Okay, and you saw the model shift slightly, so then it lined up to my datums. I'm gonna copy this movement again, because I wanna be in the center of the part again, 20 millimeters above. So I'm gonna copy and paste that right here go above it by double clicking on the icons on the side and I'm going to step through that movement and then it moves back to the center of the part. Now for my orientation I'm going to want to measure one of the flat surfaces create a line for my rotational feature or rotational orientation so I'm going to do another absolute movement Part coordinate system, X I'll stay zero. Y, actually X I'll go negative 10 millimeters to make sure I'm off from the side of the prong. Y I'll go positive 20. Z I'll actually go 25. This is gonna be positive 90, 90, and 180. And that orientation brings me right here. Looking at it from the front of the part, that is how I'm oriented now. So next feature is going to be this surface here. I'm going to make a line along that surface. So first I'm actually going to do one more movement to get closer down to that level or that location. Another absolute movement. X, Y, yeah, we'll do 10. Oh, we'll leave that at 20. We'll bring Z down to 10. 90, 90, 180. Now the, it's closer down. It has more of a direct shot to that surface. I'm going to create a line. Selecting this line right here, you can select any line feature. I'm going to adjust the nominal. So I'm going to make it unbound. All I'm choosing is a direction. I want the direction to be heading in the positive Y in normal to negative X. Now you can see the arrow is coming from this way. I'm going to do CMM movements again so it's not going to rotate or flick. And I'll take a point from here to here. And they're not perfectly straight, so again, I'll adjust the height. And now they're at the same height. And I'll just name this for rotational. Apply. touched off there. Now I'm going to use that as a rotational datum. So under datums, rotate to feature. I want it to align. Y plus was the direction that it was going. And the actual feature for rotational. As you saw, the model actually rotated to align to that feature. Save often. Now I'm going to go back to my previous spot. Now, normally I would go through the alignment program again, so I would just program it to, I just 
move up again to the starting point, copy and paste, so it actually run through the alignment twice. I'm not gonna do that here because it's just the same thing over again. So we're gonna go over now.